Chapter 6 Sons of Evil The brave Toa are backed up towards the Colosseum wall, blocking and dealing strikes against endless Vizorak and Rakshi of multiple kinds. We must find higher ground, brothers! Lua blocks a Rakshi's disintegration beam with his dual blades and swirls up a smaller tornado that flings a Dushin Rakshi up into the air and on to a group of Vizorak further back. We must work together if we want to get out of here alive. Anua slams his fists into the ground, making the ground shatter and pillars of stone shoot up from below their foes. One of the Rakshi gets impaled on a stone spike, while a Vizorak gets sent into the air and lands on the balcony above them. Have you not missed the thrill of battle, brothers? The Makuta wants a show. I say we give him one. A Rakshi screams in Pohatu's face. In response, the Toa of Stone punches it in the face, squishing the worm within. The Rakshi falls limp before him. Perhaps your newfound friend could lend us a hand, Tahu. Where is he? Or has he abandoned you, like you did us? Kopaka has hated Tahu ever since Gali died and Tahu ran off. He channels that anger into his ice swords that strike a jumping Visorak spider. The spider freezes and flies into the wall behind them, shattering on impact. I trust that Drendor does what he's supposed to. Meanwhile, we need to keep Teradax distracted. Tahu summons forth a beam of fire that burns all enemies in front of him. The strange smell of burnt Visorak venom and worms fills the air. Meanwhile, Makuta Teradax stands on the edge of his balcony, enjoying the show that the noble Toa has put on for him in these dark times. He couldn't care less if the vile Vizorak or loyal Rakshi died at the hands of the Toa. There will be more to come after them. A whisper suddenly echoes from behind him, the presence of something dark enveloping him. He turns around and stares directly at a black, red, and silver being as large as himself, the face of the being mirrors his own, the Kanohi Krakan, but different. Parts of it are made out of a metallic-like metal, leading up to a large black spike at the back of it. The being holds a massive jagged staff with red energy flowing through the tips. Teradax brings out his own staff, a dual-bladed heavy weapon with a Zamor sphere already charged up in its launcher. Interesting. Teradax tilts his head, looking at the being in front of him. You claim to be one of my Makuta, but the Makuta are dead. Only I remain. So, who are you? Drendor wasn't expecting this Makuta to be as large as him, even using a similar weapon. No matter, this Teradax stands between him and his master's vision. When Tahu told me about a tyrant that destroyed the universe, I was expecting something, well, more. Teradax stares at the being. The last time someone dared to face him like this was when Takanuva fought him in the tunnels below Matanui. You must be mistaken. I am Maguta Teradax. I am the Master of Shadows. You face a god! Drendor laughs quietly for himself. Where he came from, gods had the power to shatter planets and rip apart reality. This Makuta is nothing but a power-hungry tyrant with a delusional vision. Where I come from, they call me Dark Lord, Demon, and Betrayer. But here, they call me Makuta. They're wrong. I am no Makuta, and you are no god. We are much the same, you and I. We both strive to be worshipped by our people, and we will do everything in our power to make it a reality. Teradax almost looks relieved. He was expecting a fight, but this? The being clearly knows him, maybe even better than he knows himself. Come. Join my brothers and me. Teradax reaches forward, with his hand the red claws shining in the moonlight. Drendor looks at the hand. It's tempting. A voice suddenly echoes through his head. Remember your promise, my Dark Lord. You obey me, and I give you power. This Makuta did not bring you here. I did. And you will take this world in my name. 
The voice dissipates, its whisper still lingering, telling him to obey. Drendor hadn't even noticed that he had put his hand forward, almost touching the hand of Teradax. All my life, I've been used as a tool for others. It's time that things change. Drendor grabs the Makuta's hand. Teradax's face lit up, thinking he had just gained a powerful ally, but Drendor's face does not look back with loyalty. His eyes shine red with the black smoke of his lord flowing through him. Makuta realizes too late that he has shaken the hand of the devil. Drendor yanks Teradax's hand towards him, slamming his staff into the body of the Maku, sending him out of the balcony. Drendor walks up to the edge of the balcony, looking over the edge. Down below, he sees Teradax falling towards the sea of Protodermis. As you wish, my lord. Drendor looks down and falls, eyes locked on Teradax. Down below, the Toa sees the dark tyrant Teradax smash into the ground, creating a crater in the middle of the arena. Shortly after, Drendor lands on his feet next to the crater. Looks like the end has begun.